We busted 23 iPhone myths that people actually believe, from the urban legend that rice can magically dry out your iPhone, to the belief that private browsing mode actually keeps you private, to the number one most pervasive myth of all time. But first, let's start with a myth that was started by us. Well, not us, us. Look how many experts made videos called How I Maintain 100% Battery Life. And the people saying you can maintain it at 100% are lying to you. But the long and short of it is that every Every new iPhone ships the battery with a slightly different capacity, and even Apple says that every time you use your iPhone, your battery loses just a tiny fraction of that capacity. I've had this iPhone since September, still 100% capacity. David kind of got lucky and got an extra special battery out of the box. Speaking of 100%, which I got in the math regents in eighth grade, Here's another myth about 100%. That you shouldn't charge your iPhone to 100%. You start at 100, you go down to 25, charge it back up to 80, down to 55, that's 100%. You can't cheat the system by never charging your <laughs> iPhone up to 100%. It's all about the charge cycles. That was impressive, but accurate. So you can charge your iPhone up to 100%, but I really shouldn't charge my iPhone overnight, right? Wrong. A lot of these myths are based on old battery technology, which was a lot different than Apple's very smart technology today. Even Apple says, charge your Apple lithium ion battery whenever you want. Our next myth has to do with fast charging. You don't have to use Apple chargers, but there are limitations if you don't. Yes, on an iPhone 8 or newer, you can fast charge your iPhone up to 50% in as little as 30 minutes. But that doesn't mean any old fast charger will do. You need an Apple USB-C to lightning cable and you need a USB-C power adapter. So throw away your charger you bought five years ago on Amazon. Even if it says fast charger, it's not gonna work. But these aren't the only cables you need to be concerned about. You don't have to use Apple branded cables, but you should use an MFI certified lightning cable. MFI stands for made for iPhone. These are cables or accessories that meet Apple's standards for iPhone, iPad, and iPod rest in peace. Non-MFI cables might work for a little while, kind of lull you into a false sense of security. Let's bust it open, see if we can spot a difference on the inside. We're gonna sacrifice a real Apple cable here. David, you wanna give it a go? Uh, I'll try. There's no difference between a gas station cable and an MFI certified cable, false. But here's something that's no myth at all. Subscribing to our channel is Whoa. incredibly helpful for us. And we're almost to a million subs, so please, Subscribe. A lot of people do subscribe to the myth that iPhones can't be customized. Sure, that sort of used to be true, and Apple has always been a bit behind Samsung on new features, but now you can customize Control Center. You can add widgets to the home screen of your iPhone, and with iOS 16, you can create custom lock screens, and there's so much more you can do to customize your iPhone. Apple didn't invent the App Store either. This myth was started by, well, Apple. The first iPhones didn't even have an app store. The first iPhone came with the native apps you're familiar with. And there wasn't even an app store until 2008. So no, Apple did not invent the app store concept. Steve may have been wrong about the app store. Now there are a lot of great apps. Here's something that's not a myth. Any cell phone can call 911 even when you don't have a cell phone plan. So it's not a bad idea to leave a phone in a drawer. But isn't it true that iPhones can't get viruses? No. <laughs> There are all sorts of ways iPhones can get viruses, including malware, phishing scams, software vulnerabilities like the one we saw with iOS 15.3. And it's not like they don't care. Apple has a security bounty program. So if you at home discover a way to access someone's iCloud data, Apple will pay you $100,000. Good deal. It's a great deal. So get hacked. We're not gonna demo this how your iPhone gets hacked myth, sorry. Speaking of sorry, do you remember when Apple apologized for listening to Siri conversations? Ties into our next myth that your iPhone is listening to you all the time. Not true, it's, you know, not helped by the fact that big tech has become really, really good at targeting people with advertisements. So you talk about something and boom, there's an ad. They're not listening to you all the time. Speaking of collecting information about you, you care about your privacy when you're browsing the internet, so when you use private browsing mode, you're safe, right? Nope. Private browsing mode doesn't hide your IP address or your location. It also doesn't protect your internet activity when you're on a public Wi-Fi network. To demonstrate just how much information is available to websites, even when you're in incognito mode, go to privacy.net slash analyzer, scroll down, and tap start test. Here we go, IP address. So according to this, they know exactly where we are, and it can tell that David's using an iPhone. iOS updates often introduce new privacy features too, but a lot of people, after they update their iPhone, they complain about poor battery life. Is it true? Do iOS updates actually make your iPhone battery worse? 
No. After Apple released iOS 15.4, a ton of people said, this update is killing my battery. Here's what Apple had to say. It's normal for your apps and features to need to adjust up to 48 hours after an update. Bullsh iOS 15.4 is a perfect example of Apple just being totally wrong because they had to introduce another iOS update to fix a widespread battery problem. You know what else makes your iPhone battery die faster? Closing apps. Or does it? People say that you shouldn't close your apps because when you minimize them, they go into a low power dormant mode. And those same people also say that you shouldn't close your apps because it takes more power to open an app from scratch than from when it's minimized. That's also true, but the numbers don't really add up. The most important takeaway is that some apps just won't go into that dormant mode like they're supposed to. So closing apps is kind of like wearing the seatbelt in your car. You don't expect it to crash, but if it does, you'll be glad you are wearing it. Another iPhone battery myth, that's that auto brightness drains battery life. But the truth is that auto brightness doesn't drain battery life. And Apple even had to step in and say, turning off auto brightness may affect battery life and long-term display performance. That being said, I don't use auto brightness. I like keeping my brightness nice and low a lot of the time. And I think if you're like a team low brightness guy like me, and it's just low all the time anyway, you'll probably save some battery life by not leaving auto brightness on. Yeah, and if you're on team low brightness, I don't think you were probably on many winning sports teams as a kid. You know where else it's bright, David? The beach. Apple has this cute little iPhone comfort zone graphic on their website that shows the iPhone's standard operating temperature to be between 32 and 95 degrees. But when you go outside of that range, one extreme is much worse than the other. According to Apple, hot temperatures can permanently damage your iPhone. Cold temperatures, on the other hand, will not damage your iPhone battery. So that's why I like to keep my iPhone in the freezer. One thing a lot of people do at the beach is listen to music. So they went out and they foolishly bought a pair of the AirPods Max for $549. And they said, I'm gonna listen to some lossless audio because it says lossless audio, it's lossless, right? No, there's literally no way for iPhones to play lossless audio over Bluetooth. Just to be clear, when we say lossless audio, we're talking about CD quality. There are only three ways to listen to lossless audio on your iPhone. Number one, through the iPhone speakers. <laughs> using the $9 dongle or using an external DAC, which can cost a lot of money. You probably don't want to bring that to the beach though. Yeah, you don't want to bring that to the beach. So iPhones can't play lossless audio over Bluetooth. Surely that means that Androids can't either, right? Wrong. And don't call me Shirley. iPhones can't play lossless audio, but it's not because Bluetooth can't do lossless audio. It's because Apple doesn't want to pay the licensing fees to Sony or Qualcomm for their vastly superior Bluetooth music technology. They're the first trillion dollar company. They well, won't shell out a few bucks to make your listening experience better. Well, it's not like we're paying that much for iPhones yeah. or, or the AirPods Max that are in the wall back yeah, there. I mean, $600 yeah. headphones. There is a trade-off for higher quality music though, and it is connection quality. You may have noticed that if you're wearing your AirPods Max, you can go way far away from your iPhone and still have a good connection. Not so with Android phones. Your iPhone might not play CD quality music, but at least it's not scratchy. Speaking of scratchiness, the myth that iPhone screens can't get scratched? Oh, but they do get scratched. iPhone screens like glass have a hardness of about six on the Mohs scale. Anything less than that will not scratch them. That's most things that are in your pocket. Anything more than that will scratch them. And there are a lot of those things out there. Let's give it a test. So I got my brass key. It's about a three on the hardness scale. It's, it's not doing anything, I'm telling you. Nothing. Nothing. The glass is a six. That's a three. Let's try a five and a half. This is a Leatherman knife. It's very sharp. We just used it to cut open a cable. I'm pushing down hard for the record here. All right, let's take a look. And uh, I think we're uh, in pretty good shape. It should be in perfect shape, according to science. Isn't that remarkable? Like, I've never actually done this test in real life before, but we've all seen the videos. But it's one thing to see a video, it's another thing to take a brand new iPhone and try to scratch it with a pocket knife. Something to be careful of though, the iPhone camera lens, made of sapphire, a nine on the most scale. Let's see if this works. This is kind of the thing people say to do. Look at that. So that was really easy. Well, it's a nine. Yeah, that's a real scratch. One thing a lot of people will do to make their screen safer is throw on a screen protector to the point where they think they need a screen protector to protect their iPhone. Is that true? No. So one thing to be aware of with screen protectors is a lot of them have the same hardness of the iPhone display, so they aren't really adding much to the equation. 
The thing about screen protectors like these we bought at Walmart yesterday is that they get crappy so fast. I've never really seen one that feels as good as the actual glass. So unless you're hanging out around volcanoes, which do have very hard rocks, I would say no screen protector is necessary. And one little insider secret about screen protectors. We met a guy in Las Vegas who sold wholesale screen protectors and one of the places he sold them to was Walmart. And he said he was violating NDAs left and right to give us all this information. Long story short, Walmart pays about what, 20 cents for a screen protector? They then go and sell for $20. Don't waste your money on a screen protector. Another big misconception about the iPhone is that it's waterproof, but it's not. It's water resistance. And you really need to read the fine print here. Water resistance wears down over time and liquid damage isn't covered by your warranty. Did you know that 4chan put out a fake Apple press release for iOS 7 saying it made your iPhone waterproof? They also did something for iOS 8. Wave. Wave can be used to quickly charge your device's battery using any standard household microwave. So obviously you can't charge your iPhone using your microwave. What are you doing? I told you it doesn't work. Calm down. It's just my coffee. The point here being, be careful, think for a second, step back. Does it sound totally ridiculous? We're gonna skip that test just like Apple skipped the iPhone 9. There were some good reasons why Apple did it. The biggest of which was that it marked the 10 year anniversary of the iPhone. So iPhone 10. Also, it was a big change. No more home button, you got the notch. Judging by how well the iPhone 10 sold, I would say that the effect of Apple skipping the iPhone 9 was benign. <laughs> and now it's time for the number one iPhone myth, putting your iPhone in rice to dry it out, to save it from water damage. And you've got a friend who swears that this is what saved his iPhone. No, rice is hygroscopic. Nerd. So you put your iPhone in a bag of rice, it absorbs all the moisture in your iPhone, dries it out, the rice, then you eat the rice. The truth is that there was a study done that showed that leaving a hearing aid out in the air did better than rice in terms of drying it out. And then there are other things that are desiccants. Right that actually work better. There's a reason you don't get rice in the packages you buy on Amazon right. that are supposed to keep the electronics dry. Yeah, and just for some proof to see how poorly this works, here's my iPhone. iPhone 4 dropped it in the pool on the first day of work, tried to toss it in a bag of rice. I'm afraid we can't cover this one under can't, the warranty. Yeah, sir. it's not gonna work. And one thing that you see too is when people put their iPhone in a bag of rice, what happens is they'll put it in at an angle. So not only is your iPhone not drying out, the angle of your phone is now making the water spread further. Apple did a really good job of making the lightning port at the bottom of an iPhone rice grain size. So people would come in with these impacted grains of rice. We wouldn't be able to get them out. Rice is falling all over the place right and back. Leave it out on a flat surface, let it air, air out. iPhone and rice. It doesn't it's, work. It doesn't Science work. is proven it. My experience has proven it. I think Apple has even gone to the point now that where their website says, don't put your iPhone in rice. Because yeah, it, it just, causes more damage. If you enjoyed this video, you can support us even more by joining this channel. Cost $5 a month to join, which happens to be two plus three. And this was a 23 iPhone this video. I just made that up on the fly. There you go. Click that join button below the video. Any myths we missed? Any myths Any we missed? Any myths Leave a comment down below. Maybe we'll do a follow-up video. Thanks for watching.